September 11th, 2001, first thing that I remember is that I was still asleep and my mom came and knocked on the door and said, your dad's on the phone. He says, go look at the TV. My original attachment to Durham came when I attended Duke here for undergrad. My parents loved the area when they came up to visit, and so they moved here just as I was leaving. The way I like to think of it is that they kept my seat warm for me. I was passing through town visiting my parents briefly, was due that day to get on an airplane and go back home to Brooklyn. I was sort of straddling homes. I mean, I was in my parents' house, which felt like home on one level, but New York City, I had been living in already at that point for a dozen years, and it was home too, because I had that strong connection to there. Everybody was asking me, you know, what had I heard or what did I know or was everybody that I cared about all right? I was counting myself really lucky that it was friends of friends. It was no dear ones that had been torn away from me. And I felt myself very lucky because I knew lots of people who couldn't say that. But they knew in their gut, I think, that it couldn't go back to being the same, that it was one of those um, continental divide moments before and after are completely inseparable. I, I was able to get back to New York after about four or five days, and the cab driver took us by way of Union Square, which is where a lot of people were putting little shrines and photos of their loved ones and have you seen so-and-so and candles. And, and all of that had been in the news a little bit. I wasn't completely taken by surprise, but now I was seeing it firsthand. Now I was immersed you know, in it fully 360. There was the smell of electrical discharge. There was the smell of building materials burning. There was the smell of human remains, you know, caught up in the flames, everything. It was unlike anything you ever would have encountered. I did not want to repeat it. I could feel part of my throat you know, seizing up or, or, or tightening, but I couldn't tell. Was it because I was on the verge of tears over seeing this welling up of human suffering? Or was it because I was just close enough to actually get the molecules that had been burned out of that building five days earlier to start lodging in the back of my throat? And I think it's both. There was a strange energy, a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of sharing. A lot of people's guard was down, actually. You always walked around the street with it up. After 9-11, there was so much emotionally raw time for people that they were in grief or they were in shock and they were just trying to cope. That a lot of that guard came down, I think, and, and you just saw right into people's souls sometimes. So six years later, after 9-11 and, and life had kind of returned to normal, I decided to move back to Durham. The ability to shed the, the part of you that is always on guard when you're walking around city streets in New York, the part of you that is keeping an eye on your surroundings and, you know, never quite relaxes. It takes a toll, which I realized a lot more after coming here and not having to do it. And realized I had all that extra energy to do other things that also meant something to me. So that's what brought me back.